it's this, the Bond moment. Yes, the Bond moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say that. You yeah. say that. You say that. You're saying that now. Yeah. So we've been expecting you. We've been expecting you. <laughs> so anyone just. Oh. <laughs> Just to recap really quickly, anyone that's been to the gigs in the last couple of years will know that we have an abiding love of Bond themes. And so we just thought, why don't we write one ourselves? Excellent. And we thought that, well, you know, moon's been done, earth's been done, sky's been done, sun hasn't been done. So we came up with the title first, which is Sunflower. And in the middle of the last tour, which was last April, yeah. we, we wrote this in a couple of hours. And well, we could just run down. We'll run down what we what, wrote. What we wrote. shocking as we do well no not as shocking as we do we kind of knew that how do you put this on an album without you know we talked about pastiche it is kind of a pastiche it's a nice song it's really good but it's a bit of a pastiche so we we're reveling in our childhood yeah I mean, it's I, it was so evocative for me of, of that there weren't many things my dad did with us but he did take us to every bond film and John Barry's scores were extraordinary for me. But well, we started this sunflower. Yeah. And, and, and you, should, you could probably hear oh, the, I love the that thesaurus. Cool. I don't know if you know, but like, uh, genius of sunflower, uh, harlequin, Irish eyes, oh, thousand yeah. suns. A thousand suns is also uh, uh, the nuclear holocaust. Yeah. Uh, exactly. In, in yeah. An essay of, you know, and, and Kelly just, it, just, yeah. it just fell on top of us. We went, oh. It's great. Then what do you do? To honour the tradition of song rather than just bond. Because as Callum Malcolm said, that's been fucking done to death. <laughs> you know, and, he's, like, and he's absolutely right because um, you have to live with this yeah. forever. You have to live with it forever. So, you know, so, okay, so the first thing we did was take the my favourite chord out at the end. So, we, <laughs> so you, take, you take the chord out at the end and, you, and we started to just shift a few things around harmonically so it wasn't quite so bond. And we, we played this way and we played that way and we played that way. And we eventually at Rockfield, we recorded this version. Um, with the band. Yeah. With the band. And so we get to the next stage because that's the first stage of production and we get to put the guitars down on it and 
when me and Colin and Callum got together again, he turned around and he said, you know, it's just the old one out, listen, and, uh, and he played it. And it, it sounded fit. sounded perfectly good, but it sounded kind of like a bad Austin Powers <laughs> theme tune. You're a groovy baby, you know. It was, mm, uh, it just mm. wasn't right. So at that point we were thinking, OK, because we started this process with 17 or 18 songs. We actually only recorded 13, so we thought, OK, it's going to be a 12-track album. So um, we thought, OK, it's off the album. And then about... A week later, Callum Back kind of touch. timidly rang up and said, um, I've just been messing around with the uh, sunflower and I've taken everything off it apart from the vocal. And I've put this really, really weird thing, this kind yeah. of thing that makes it dissonant and strange. And he sent it and frankly, I was just completely blown away by it because what it managed to do was with what you just heard... It's a little bit like a song about him, about the, the Bond character. It's about him. It's Third about this person. guy. Whereas this becomes now... It turned inwards. It's about you. It's like, and what I think in my head, it's like tall poppy syndrome. It's being out there ready to get mm. your head cut off. And there's something incredibly personal about it. And it's got, it's got his sense of dissonance in it. You're going to find this shocking. I reckon that many of you will think, oh, I really like the other version. <laughs> But yeah. when you get used to this, you will fall in love with this. I think you mm. will. I hope you will. It's kind of a cinematic quality overall, but yeah. that one specifically zeroes in on something that I don't understand yet. But If you're familiar with uh, serialist music, uh, yeah, 20th century exactly Steve Reich, uh, Philip Glass, Steve and the like, you, you, you get where Callum's coming from there. I was uh, shocked, Anybody? and then I, it's actually one of the two tracks that does it for me every time. I, it's just, if I'm a music fan and I hear that and I love it, and I don't even think of it as me, it has to be on the record like that. So. This